Israel's Shin Bet security agency has arrested five Israelis of Iranian descent, four of them women, who allegedly worked for an Iranian intelligence agent, the agency said on Wednesday, January 12. Citing the agency, the Jerusalem Post reports the agent, known as Rambod Namdar, approached the women on Facebook as an Iranian Jew and kept in touch with them for several years using encrypted messaging app WhatsApp. One of the suspects, a woman in her 40s, allegedly agreed to photograph the U.S. Embassy in Tel Aviv, take pictures inside the interior and Social Affairs Ministries buildings, and photograph a shopping center in Halon. She was also asked to encourage her son, who was about to be drafted, to serve in military intelligence. Another suspect, a 57-year-old woman from Beit Shemesh, is alleged to have performed various tasks for a $5,000 payment. She encouraged her son to serve in the intelligence corps and gave military documents belonging to him to Rambod. The woman was also instructed to establish a club for Israelis of Iranian descent in order to gather their personal information and try to get close with a female member of Israeli's parliament. She was instructed to install a hidden camera in a massage room at her home, apparently to collect potentially embarrassing footage of her clients. The four women were indicted on charges of making contact with a foreign agent. They faced maximum sentences of 15 years. The defense attorneys say their clients did not know their handler was an Iranian agent. Iranian journalist Mohammad Awaz claims to have received leaked information from the country's government about the assassination of Iran's leading nuclear scientist on Friday. Awaz says the attack was carried out by 12 gunmen, who were supported by a team of 50 operatives providing them with information and logistics. He says the hit squad knew Mohsen Fakhirazadeh's security convoy was on its way to his holiday home and were waiting in ambush at a traffic circle marking the entrance to the town of Asbard. As the convoy entered the traffic circle, a car bomb exploded, hitting the rear security car. The 12 attackers then opened fire on the middle car with machine guns and two sniper rifles. According to Awaz, one of the attackers then dragged the scientist out of his car and executed him. The attackers then disappeared, and so far not one attacker has been caught. The Iranian Fars news agency gave a conflicting report, saying that there were no gunmen and that the attack was done by firing a remote-controlled machine gun mounted on the truck that later exploded. A Jewish media outlet claims that Israeli spies used complex operations to bomb three nuclear facilities in Iran over the last 17 months. Here are the details. The Telegraph reports that the pro-Israel media outlet, The Jewish Chronicle, reported on Thursday, December 2nd, that Mossad agents had tricked Iranian scientists into blowing up an Iranian nuclear facility. The outlet claimed that a major explosion at Iran's Natanz facility in April was the result of Mossad agents posing as Iranian dissidents to recruit scientists working at the facility. The scientists agreed to smuggle in explosives disguised as boxes of food in catering trucks. Some of the explosives were also dropped inside the facility by a drone before being gathered by the scientists. The explosion completely destroyed the plant's independent internal power system. Iran acknowledged that attacks on Natanz had set its nuclear program back by months and said it was searching for Iranian suspects in relation to the operation. The outlet also claimed that another explosion at the Natanz facility in 2020 was caused when Israel remotely detonated explosives hidden inside building materials a year before. In June this year, Mossad operatives used a motorcycle-sized drone to attack another Iranian facility with missiles. The new revelations in the Jewish Chronicle appeared days after Iran resumed negotiations with world powers over returning to the Iran nuclear deal. Former President Donald Trump unilaterally withdrew the U.S. from the deal during his presidency. Iran's top covert operations commander and arguably the second most powerful man in the country was killed by a U.S. drone strike in Baghdad last week. General Qasem Soleimani had served Iran as a major planner of military and intelligence operations for 20 years. General Qasem Soleimani, head of Iran's Expeditionary Quds Force, was killed early Friday by a U.S. drone that fired missiles into his convoy near Baghdad International Airport. The U.S. military has confirmed that it carried out the attack. The Times of Israel reports that a MQ-9 Reaper drone fired four missiles into two cars and destroyed the vehicles on the airport's access road. Citing local media sources, the paper reports that the blast tore Soleimani apart and the general was later identified by the ring he wore on his hand. The strike killed Soleimani, his son-in-law, and five Iranian Revolutionary Guard members. According to the New York Times, several Tehran-backed Iraqi militia leaders in the convoy were also killed. The Times of Israel reported 10 fatalities for the airstrike. The Washington Examiner reports that the MQ-9 drone was favored for its quiet propellers and loitering capabilities. Citing debris analysis by independent observers, Forbes reports that the missiles utilized could be the JIGM, a missile type that adds advanced sensors to the Hellfire missile. 
The U.S. moved to designate Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corps and its Quds Force a terrorist organization last year. U.S. President Donald Trump said in a statement that the IRGC actively participates in, finances, and promotes terrorism as a tool of statecraft. The recent deaths of two ship workers in a mysterious drone strike on an oil tanker highlighted a shadow war between Iran and Israel that could escalate into a real war. We compared the militaries of the two sides and found that while Iran has many number advantages, Israel has some crucial quality advantages. Here are the details. We looked at the military strength of Iran and Israel and found that Iran's much larger population of 84 million versus the roughly 9 million people in Israel allows Iran to field an active duty force of 525,000 troops, compared to Israel's 170,000. Iran has more tanks, but these are mostly T-72s and copies of the T-54 and T-55, which are widely considered inferior to Israel's Merkava Mark IV. Israel's air force is larger and much more modern than Iran's, with 66 F-15s, 175 F-16s, and at least 27 F-35 stealth fighters, with plans to own 75 F-35s in total. Iran's air force consists of 63 old F-4s and 26 old F-14s, as well as 19 MiG-29s and 23 Su-24s from Russia and 17 F-7s from China. Israel also possesses 48 attack helicopters compared to Iran's 12. Iran's navy is larger and is modernizing, but Israel's navy has advanced missiles and vessels, and it can likely also launch nuclear-armed cruise missiles from its five Dolphin-class submarines, which are believed to operate near the Persian Gulf. Thanks to US-led sanctions, Iran likely has no nuclear weapons on its 29 submarines. Iran pursued nuclear capabilities in the late 1980s and early 1990s, and while Tehran says it doesn't seek nuclear weapons now, its recent enrichment activity has raised questions about its true aims. This is the moment an Israeli Apache helicopter blew up an Iranian drone. An Iranian drone was shot down on Saturday morning in northern Israel by the Israeli military. According to the Times of Israel, the drone was destroyed by an attack helicopter that engaged it after it flew inside Israel's airspace. The Iranian aircraft is said to be called a Thunderbolt drone. It is reportedly reverse-engineered from an American RQ-170 Sentinel spy drone that Tehran captured in 2011. Both models bear resemblance to the B-2 stealth bomber. Here's the explosion again, courtesy of Israeli Defense Forces. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.